Jesse Goldberg Strassler. I do radio and media relations for the Lansing Lugnuts, joined by Jackie Borsick. And Jackie, let's go right back to 1995, before the Lugnuts arrived, before there were Lugnuts, because this is what this is really going to be about, the team getting that nickname. Were you a big baseball fan before Lansing had a minor league baseball team? Uh, not really, because there was really no baseball games going on except at MSU, and I'm not an MSU grad, so I really wasn't connected. What were your thoughts when you heard that there was a baseball team coming to Lansing? I was just glad they were cleaning up a, a part of downtown on that street that was really notorious for a lot of other bad things, and it was looked very hopeful for the city. And then take me through it. The team was looking for a nickname? there was an announcement in the newspaper that they were running a contest. And I don't know, I guess I had a very slow lunch hour one day and I got to thinking about it. And then over the weekend, I was with family and I thought I need something that says Lansing, kind of rhythmic, you know, I need another word that started with an L. Lights didn't seem to do it. So I was asking my nephews, I said, name me some car parts that start with an L. And one of them said lug nuts. And I'm going, now I have to make a statement. They wanted you to write a statement about why you picked that name. So I wrote something to the effect that uh, you don't move forward and your wheels don't move unless you are secure to the car with lug nuts. And that this is one way this ball team is going to help the city of Lansing to move forward. So I tied that all in together and I submitted it. And I didn't give a whole lot of thought about it because it was kind of ridiculous. You didn't think, I'm sending in the winner. Not really. I just thought it was kind of, you know, odd. But I gave it a try. And then I get this phone call. And this is when they had the little store downtown, the first little opening. And they called me and they said that I was one of the four top people, I guess it was, or three, something like that. And they were going to have a dinner for us. So she said, I'll call you back later. So this was like two or three days before the announcement day. And she calls me the next day and she said, you're still planning to come, aren't you? And I said, yes. And then later on, I got another phone call and she said, what would you like, fish or chicken? And I said, chicken. And so then she said, now come down to the store tomorrow night at five o'clock or 5.30 or whatever it was when I got off work. And she said, be sure there's nobody around you when you come to the door because there's a lot of people wanting to know what the name is. And they had brown paper over the windows to hide everything because they had stuff in the store already. So I knock on the door and they open the door and let me in. And she said, and I'm thinking, this doesn't look like dinner. And so she says, you actually are the winner. And I said, you're kidding. And she said, no. So then she went on to explain what they wanted to do. So the day they were to announce it, and of course I was to be totally secretive, couldn't say a word. And I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. So Is that a hard secret to keep? Uh, well, I lived alone, so I didn't have to go home and be tempted to talk to somebody. But the next day, I told my boss I needed to take a larger lunch hour. Didn't tell him why. And I knew the colors were going to be red, black, and white. So I think I was wearing some of those colors. And they had closed off Washington Avenue. And they had set up a stage which looked like the back end of a big semi with the side gone. And the mayor is there, the owners are there, Tom and Sherry, and um, I'm sitting up there on the stage with them. And some people from the office were down in the audience, there was a big crowd of people <clears throat> collecting. And they looked at me and they go, they point to themselves and go, you, you know, like, what are you doing up there? And I just kind of got a chuckle out of it. So when it came time to make the announcement, they told me I could go to the mic and read my statement, say nothing more than read the statement and announce the name of the team. 
So that's what I did. <clears throat> How nervous were you? I was a little shaky because I'm thinking, oh my gosh, but what I didn't realize was I would be pressured in by a lot of reporters after that. How and why did you pick this name? Do you think it's stupid? Is it da 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 da? And it was, it was just kind of uh, one of those days when you go, you, you pinch yourself later and say, did this really happen? <laughs> but what had happened is news reporters went down with a telescopic lens or a magnifying glass or something, and they found a little tiny crack in the brown paper in the window and got a glimpse of the name. And so there was a big newspaper, one of these editorials, one fellow wrote a lot of them. I hate to mention his name now because <laughs> he made a couple of really sarcastic columns about the name that it was, and it was so stupid, you know. So anyway, when it was all over, I went back to the office and I went in and saw, said to my boss, I said, uh, well, have you heard? I said, they've, they've named the lug nuts. And he said, yeah, it's kind of a stupid name. And I said, well, do you know who named them? And then I just stood there and evidently it was all written over my face. And he said, oh no. And I go, oh yes. <laughs> so it was, it was quite interesting. I found out later that an article got published in the Sports Illustrated, it had my name in there and the name of the game. And then there was a friend of my sister's who lived in Southern Illinois, way down there. And in her newspaper was the announcement that I had named the lug nuts. And she sent me a clipping. And I think the office has the original on that one because I gave them a whole bunch of my backup stuff as copies. Uh, so how that was it feel cool. to be so famous all of a sudden? It was, it was kind of odd, yes. I, I wasn't used to it. <laughs> but they gave me $100 worth of merchandise. So I ended up with a, of course the prices were a little cheaper back then. I ended up with a sleeveless shirt, a sweatshirt, and a t-shirt. And tickets for two for the first season. And numerous people after me have said, well, didn't you get a lifetime pass, you know? I said, no. But my girlfriend got hooked, and she's the gal who rings the bells all the time, uh, the cowbells. Oh, yes. Yes, I got her very hooked on the lug nuts, because we went to, she was the one who got the ex, extra packet of tickets. To, how many of those games that you got tickets to every game, how many of them did you go to? The first couple of three years, we went to quite a few, and we sat through sleet, rain, wind, snow, tornado warnings. Uh, yeah, I, as I've gotten older, I've kind of lessened my <laughs> number of times going in the bad weather I skip. Do you ever use this as an ace up your sleeve in conversation where you say to someone, you know, I named the lug nuts. I have done this to people I'm sitting by in the ballpark and they'll get to talking about, you know, how they like the lug nuts and so on. I said, I'll tell you a secret. And they go, what? I said, I won the contest. You did. Oh, I'm going to go home and tell someone so that I met the lady that named the lug nuts. <laughs> like it's a big deal. And I go, this is too funny. <laughs> I know with Tom Dixon, with Sherry Myers, how it was that the team nickname went from being unpopular and the Lansing State Journal was doing the polls to the point where it became so popular and everybody loved lug nuts. And that still gives Tom such a smile to think about how everybody embraced it. For you, how was that change of opinion where you saw the negative reaction in the early going to the point where everybody embraced your name? I just say to myself, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too bad for them that they did not get it at the beginning. Uh, I, I understand though that that first year, the Lugnuts, as a minor league team, sold more merchandise than any other minor league team. And they were getting orders as far as way as Australia. So it was quite an odd name for a team. And uh, yeah, it, it was fascinating. And I, yeah, I, I have mentioned that sometimes in an, a, a school alumni, 
report one time. They wanted to know what we had done and accomplished, and I put in there. I had named a minor league baseball team. <laughs> you submit the name. You don't think of anything else. They invite you to the shop. How did that feel to see your name, the name that you would come up with, on shirts, on caps, on merchandise? There it is. There is actually Lansing Lugnuts. Yes, and I, and I loved the, the uh, logo, the artwork on it. Yeah, I, I just thought it was quite, uh, quite interesting. It's kind of um, not too stylized. I mean, it's not too perfect. It's, it's rugged kind of like, and, and I thought that was very interesting. I had drawn something to go with my submission, but it didn't come up. And then they had somebody else who had submitted, had done some artwork, and I understood that they had used him to design the logo. So yeah, it, it's, it was a fun year, and it seems like it's been a long time ago, and it has been. I can't believe it's this many years already since all that happened. Do you still own anything from back then, 1995, 1996? My sleeveless top, and probably a cap or two. <laughs> and probably um, one of the, two or three of the giveaways. Yeah, I still have some stuff. And I have a little memory box of clippings and so on. So, good Next stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. This has been great hearing the story of how the Lugnuts got their name. It was, it was quite interesting to, to me, I, just to think that it all happened. <laughs> well, Jackie Forsick, I'm Jesse Goldberg Strassler, and that's why they're the Lansing Lugnuts. And there I am. <laughs>